Russell. I am Assistant Director with the Evergreen Council on Problem Gambling, and I'm joined here today with Dr. Sussman. He is a gaming addiction expert and professional, and we're going to be reacting to a video on Genshin Impact. That's right. I, I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist, and I specialize in treating internet and video game addiction. And so we're going to look at uh, what what an actual gamer goes through when they play this Genshin Impact game, which is of particular interest to both of us. I see a lot of my current patients playing it. It's a very popular game. All right, here we go. So this is a video from Sarah Kay, where she pulls it up and kind of starts from the beginning and is giving her viewers a little bit of a tutorial of it and for us, and then this allows us to see some of these game mechanics we'll be talking about. I'm excited, I'm excited to play it. Thank you guys for coming in. I'm happy to deliver the long awaited um, Genshin Impact for you. Closed captioning's a little off, but Honestly, that's okay. Honestly, this game looks like a mixture of Tales and um, Breath of the Wild, but that's just from what I can tell. I, I think it's going to be really fun. I'm actually a huge Breath of the Wild fan myself. So I, it, it's my only, the only thing that I might not like is the gotcha aspect of it. Even though I do, I actually do really enjoy, like, I don't want to say gambling, but I like. But she does kind of want to say gambling. Yeah, she does. <laughs> she great. just did. Yep. Yeah. So she referenced gotchas which is um, a mechanic yeah. similar to what we have with like Magic the Gathering of Ages, where you're making a, a purchase and you're hoping to get certain items, but you've got to make this purchase first before you discover what it is you're going to get out of it. And if you got the good stuff and she's like, I don't want to say gambling, but then she did say gambling because there is this, I, I'm hoping to get something of value or something I want, but you've got no guarantees. <laughs> it's just very ironic because it's like at that point, the game gotcha, you know? Ooh, so yes, the really, game gotcha you. you know you're hooked, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, like it's gotcha funny how some of gotcha. these mechanics with this type of gamble are more appealing to people mm -hmm. than just a direct purchase. Right, right. No, that's yeah. true. And, and and of course, like we could talk a lot about free to play games, which is like the really not they, they wind up people wind up spending thousands more on those games than you would if you just purchased a game and played it like single player. Um, so it's all about unlocking things and the competition of unlocking more things than your friends. And then there is a lot of like gambling psychology that goes into unlocking things, which we can talk about. Yes. And I don't know if you watched the other video links I sent you about Genshin Impact, but you reminded me of one of them where the streamer is basically giving a tutorial strictly about this, the wishes, the wish aspect and the forms right. of currency. And she refers to it as, you know, here's your strategy if you don't want to spend mm -hmm. any money and just stick with free to play. Yeah. Here's your strategy if you're a dolphin, you're willing to spend a little bit, but not much. Mm -hmm. And here's your strategy if you're a whale, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which comes right. from the gambling world, right? Sure. So it's gambling terminologies, but she's recognizing these uh, this gambling element to the wishes, which we'll get. I think that's comments. great that you that you picked up on the fact that that's that's terminology from gambling. Um, a lot of people believe that the whales or the people who are spending the most money are those who are wealthy, who have a lot of money to burn. And what research is actually showing is that's not the case. They're actually more likely to be among individuals who, in the studies and screening instruments, identify as people most likely to have some degree of uh, problem gambling or gambling addiction. It's most likely to be stealing their parents' credit card or, you know, directly out of the wallet. But it's, but it's all about instant gratification and just doing something the quickest way possible without real foresight about what's going to come in the future or what the consequences will be down the road. Yep. Yep. So we're only 40 seconds in and already talking about gambling. 
this. <laughs> right. this game. All it right, is great, yeah. I like random stuff, you know, like dreamy hunting and like shiny hunting and stuff like that. I was born in New Jersey, pretty close to Atlantic City. It runs oh. in my blood. Please help. There you go. Should I play with controller or should I play with mouse and keyboard? Does anyone? I would assume it's better with controller, but I'm not sure. You might like keyboard. I'm going to try keyboard first then. If I don't like keyboard, then I'll plug in the controller. I'm going to love this game. I think I'm going to like this game too. I'm excited. The music is very pretty here. I really like it. You know, she's talking about all these things at the beginning of the game that just grab you in, right? But look at that scenery to the game and look, and she immediately picks up on the music, which, you know, I think the, the, the people who design the games, they know this. They know that you've got to pull people in fast or they'll go to something else. Mm hmm Absolutely. I mean, and credit to the artists and the musicians who yeah. have incredible skill. Um, I mean, it yeah, really is beautiful. It really is. It really is. And I, I would say it's, it's, it even looks a little better than Breath of the Wild, you know, which is really one of my favorite games. I mean. I'm a gamer myself, so. And this would really appeal to me. But this is very beautiful. It's a, it's a pretty title screen, too. I really can't believe that this game is free. There you go. So is it, though? <laughs> yeah. Here from another world. So cute. But when you wanted to leave and go on so I think the premise of this game is those two characters are like brother and sister or something. Mm -hmm. And so the game starts out introducing you to these these characters and the plot line. Yeah. Who are you? The sustainer of heavenly principles. The irrigation of mankind ends now. It's just spectacular manga animation. And yes. totally it grabs you but it's also these characters they they wear such beautiful clothes and and they're almost a little over sexualized um is it too loud? It... <laughs> wow this is really pretty select a twin so you get the view up the skirt exactly. and everything I, I honestly i think that this game has a lot in it to pull in both genders yeah know? and um yeah i mean they're they're patients of mine who with um uh you know who 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 uh they really like this for the fashion you know and the, yeah the clothes. and this style of artwork has uh, a large fan base mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right that's right it's pretty cross-cultural really yeah mm -hmm. i want to be the bad guy yeah, I think a lot of people um, assume that most gaming addicts are 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 Do, boys, I but I get I see a lot of girls in my practice. Yeah, and people tend to assume that it's just young people mm -hmm. who play games or can get addicted to games, but it's all ages. The average right. is thirty three years old for gamers. You know, now that you mention it, it's a little ambiguous how old the characters are in the game. That's true. You know, the thing about um Yeah. The thing about avatars is that when you're when you're watching them, you can kind of um project your own uh characteristics onto them. You know, you can you can see some of yourself in them. Um but at the same time, these manga avatars have very extreme emotional expressions. Um, so uh, maybe you it can also connect with you and the feelings you've had. And, um, you know, you can, um, if, if you have uh, trouble uh, talking about your own feelings, um, you know, these characters are so emotionally vulnerable, vulnerable and, and their emotions are so just strongly pronounced um that you know who knows maybe in some ways that that helps uh players connect to some of their own feelings that they're not talking about and i think 
gaming and their gaming friends becomes that safe space of people yeah. who get them and understand them where the spouse or parents might not get it. That's right. That's right. And exactly. Staying in this game world is not just about addiction. It's also about, uh, you know, wanting a place to escape to and the social aspects of it, you know, wanting to, um, wanting to feel like there's a place where you belong um, and maybe also leveling the social playing field for you because the characters do a lot of the socializing for you. And socializing within a game can be very different than, than socializing in the real world, but it's still, it still requires, it still has its own kind of code that's you right. Know, what you do and don't do, what you say and don't say. We actually did a podcast. So we have a Connections Gaming and Gambling podcast. And we had someone come on who talked about females in the gaming environment, particularly in the types of games that are predominantly uh, male. Uh -huh. Right. And the types of females who tend to gravitate towards these games and can thrive in this male dominated environment. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. but will still do certain things socially while they're in there because of potential repercussions or the way that they're seen or the way that they're talked to. It's re it was really fascinating getting to hear from her who's researched this whole aspect. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I know there's a lot of like uh, boys who play these games and young men uh, who like to play female characters and, you know, like to sort of role play uh, females uh, when they're interacting with other gamers. Although that's one thing I haven't totally figured out about this game, to be honest, and maybe she'll talk about it more, is I haven't figured out how much of it is single player and how much of it is multiplayer and how many of the people you're talking to are uh, NPCs versus how many are like other people online. And maybe you have a choice of, of what the ratio is. Right. Right. I don't know if she talks about that in this one or not. Um, she does when she gets to the first wish opening, which I think is coming up. Uh, you end up playing like, I think four characters and you rotate which mm. character you can play and 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 fight with um, immediately. So that's kind of interesting that you're not restricted to just one character from the start to the end of the round. Or like with World of Warcraft, you've just got one character your whole lifespan of the game. And this one, you can rotate them very frequently. So yeah. you get to play lots of them. And sometimes I think <clears throat> you mentioned men liking to play female characters, I think the game developers, particularly nowadays, I feel like they've done a pretty good job of making all the characters fun to play, regardless yeah. of their gender, regardless of who's playing them. They'll pick a female character just because she's cool and she's OP and she can like dominate. And so that's just the character they want to play. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, at the same time, there's an appeal to patients of mine with gender dysphoria, um, mm -hmm. and and um, you know maybe part of that is that they get to play, um, uh, you know, they get to play different genders, and it's safe. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. it's like they get to explore literally and figuratively. Yeah. I mean, that's what these games are all about, is exploring, exploring the world. But Look at that bird. Virtual world. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, look, I mean, I have to say, so much of this is like a direct ripoff of Breath of the Wild, but it's like they take it one better. Like, they they just, it, the graphics are spectacular. Oh, no. Um, but, but so much in this looks just like Breath of the Wild. The cooking, the, the, the dragons the um the 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 uh, shrines the even the landscape so you know i don't know how original the game developers were um with their design but 
maybe that's really smart to, to go with something that they know works. So you think it's kind of a direct appeal to the, the crowd that already likes Breath of the Wild? Uh, not necessarily. I think, um, I actually think that's a different crowd. Um, oh. I think it's, I, I think it's like, th they, I think they liked that and put it in their game, you know, like they, they knew it works. Um, I don't know if they're trying to get Breath of the Wild players because those are the players that tend to like single player games on a console. Uh, and I think that's why they get away with it because e even the shooting a bow and arrow, I, I think they get away with a game that looks so much like Breath of the Wild without being accused of being unoriginal because there's, I don't think there's that much crossover. Maybe there's some, but I, but I, I feel like um, my patients really either stick to heavy multiplayer or free to play use, or they stick to heavy console use. They tend to have things they like to do more. And some are just on social media all the time. So they just had her cooking something. Mm -hmm. like yes, this, this is exactly what the cooking is like. In <laughs> so. Why Why is there this aspect of you're playing the game and then all of a sudden you got to like cook something? What is that about? Well, is it's that to increase their health or just to... yeah. So you make at least in Breath of the Wild, you you when you cook different things, um, it gives you potions that you can take or meals that you can eat. You get to keep it in your inventory, and then you can eat, if your health becomes low or if you run out of magic power or, or if you uh, run out of um, stamina, you can take you can you can use something you cook to get it back. It can help mm -hmm. you beat big bosses or, um, but it's also, it's like a craft. It's like an art in itself, you know, and, and it's funny. It's like, it's virtual cooking, right? And it's like, you don't have the dangers of cooking in the real world or the preparation or, you know, it's like, it's much faster to cook something in this game than it is to cook something in real life. Um, and of course you don't get the real world skills, but you get the virtual skills. Yeah. And, and there's pets said, you can interact with. Look at that. She says here that she can't pet the dog. If you're going to put a dog in a game, you have to be able to pet it. <laughs> you know, Why it's funny. Why would you that, not let her pet the dog? <laughs> yeah, no, that, in fact, maybe, maybe that also speaks to what I was talking about before, because um, the dog in Breath of the Wild, you can't pet either. And that's something a lot of the geeks like myself who play it complain about. Right. And she said a minute ago she was excited to explore this beautiful city. And that mm -hmm. reminded me of another video where it's a game developer talking to a room full of game developers about how to make money off of free to play games, which this yeah. one would be one. And he said, you got to know the profile of who's playing. Some people like yeah. to explore. So you got to make stuff yeah. that they can explore and ways that they can pay mm -hmm. money to throughout their exploring. Some want to fight. This yes. game uh, will have both. <laughs> yeah, you have you put you put all sorts of different activities in the game to appeal to all different personalities. Exactly. Right, right. The cooking, the you just like yourself. living in a virtual world kind of yep. idea. Yeah. Once you've really gotten integrated into this world, once you've learned the cooking and you've learned the fighting and you've learned the exploring and you've learned the flying through the sky. It's so hard to leave that world because not only can some of those things not even be done in the real world, but some of them are just done so much quicker and easier in the game. Yeah. You know, that reminds me of another podcast episode we have. We interviewed a guy who at the time of the podcast had been gaming free for three years. No mm -hmm. games, no video mm -hmm. games at all. He was in recovery from video gaming wow. addiction and he talked about that aspect of fast pace versus slow pace in real life. And he's yep. like, you know, in the game, you have a goal and yep. you can achieve it within an hour. He's like, and in real life, you have a goal and it can take you years. That's <laughs> to right. Achieve it. And if you can't achieve it in an hour, 
there's like six other goals that pop up along the way in the game. Um, and you're always achieving one of them or getting one of them. It's like you never have to wait long before something else pops up. And is that one of the aspects that can make games addicting is this fast paced achievement? Like yes, rewards definitely. Quickly? So all this, all the research that we've done on addiction for years tells us that the number one factor in predicting how addictive something is, in other words, how hard it is to stop, is how fast you get what you want. It's all about getting what you want when you want it. And so the most addictive drugs, for example, are things like cocaine that get you high immediately. But if you take cocaine and you make it... Um, so it gets you high even faster by turning it into crack so you can smoke it. Uh, just that, just making you high a few seconds faster makes a huge difference in how addictive it is. And so people think that crack is more addictive than regular cocaine because there's something special about it, but there isn't. It's the same drug. You just get high faster. Uh, and that's why cigarettes are so addictive, even though you know, they don't get you nearly as high as these other drugs because they get you whatever it is you want from them instantly because you smoke them. You know, and that also makes me think of mobile games where the pace of the game is so fast. Yeah, people are. Uh, That's right. That's achieving right. things and winning things and getting all yeah. this stuff seconds. You know, you're right. In in some ways, mobile games have so much less in them for exploring and there's so much less developed and there's you know some of them are very primitive very simple um they really don't have nearly as much to offer in terms of this beautiful rich landscape with all these interactive elements but they're still incredibly addictive uh because they just again they like you said they're just so fast paced you know you it it takes a lot less time to get into them you know you just wherever you are you can just whip your phone out and you're doing them and so you know there's two things about gaming that um are uh give people difficult skills to master one is you know delayed gratification is a hard skill to master and you know that that's if if you have like a simple mobile game that you can take out any time, um, it's very hard to delay your gratification. And the other skill is you know putting the brakes on when you're really um, when when it's really time to stop. And I think it's the it's the latter skill that a game like this makes really difficult. Like it's really hard to stop playing a game like this, whereas the mobile games are really hard not to start. You know because they really are like. Come on, it'll just take a second. We'll give you what you want right away. And mm -hmm. these these games are like, oh, you can't stop doing this because you've got 10 tasks to solve and there's all these people counting on you and there's all these places you still have to explore. And I think games like this take advantage of a lot of the, the concept well-known in gambling of um, variable ratio reinforcement, you, you know, where, where everything is random and there's always... Um, it's there's always this like giant slot machine effect where you know you can um uh, you know there's just so many aspects of of luck and and you know what am i going to see next and am i going to win this battle or not and you know is the mm -hmm. next place i explore going to be a place i like or a place i don't like mm -hmm. and getting collectibles right right <laughs> i mean that's that that's basic i mean that's basic slot machine logic you know you, you go up to a box a loot box and you you know you open it up and it could you could maybe you even spend a certain amount of money on the loot box and you open it up and there's something great in there or something lousy in there but it's different every time and it's totally random and mm -hmm. if it were something great every time and the same great thing every time the game would not be as addictive so speaking of slot machine and loot box mechanics. Let's talk about wishes. So I paused it here yeah, and in a minute, perfect. I'll turn the volume up mm -hmm. and watch her do this process. Um, mm -hmm. I watched another video and rewatched a certain explanation of these mechanics like three times before it finally dawned on me. Oh, it's a loot box. Okay. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's just a different graphic artwork for a loot box. That's what yeah. they said. And they that even tell you right on screen. Can we see my pointer? 
uh, 10 set, 20% off. So this is the first wish she's gotten in this game, and she's already got 20% off. Mm. That's first, on purpose. First 10 set will <laughs> right? That's on purpose. Uh, Noelle. First, yeah, first 10 the set character. will receive Noel. So they're guaranteeing something, something mm -hmm. good for them. Yeah. Every 10 wishes is guaranteed to include at least one four star or higher character. And I think they have five stars in this game four star or five right. star are the highest. So it's yep. telling you, it's Blue using box. odds language here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's using right. gambling language and it's showing you the Noel character. Um, chances remaining. This is a loot box mechanic. They've just designed yeah. it as a banner. Now, for those watching who don't know, loot boxes have been banned in some countries. Oh, right. They they're were being regulated. Here. Yeah, they're being regulated in some countries. They're basically the slot machines of a video game. It's here the host had a conversation about the Entertainment Software Rating Board's definition of simulated gambling versus real gambling as it pertains to the teen versus adult ratings for video games. We felt it'd be easier just to show you. Now, in the Got games like uh, <laughs> gut reaction here. Uh, Grand Theft Auto, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where literally uh, that's a fun one. five online GTA five. They have a casino yeah. in the game. That's right. right. Nowhere on the rating system does it say anything about simulated gambling. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, of course, it says mature and. You know, all yeah, it rates all the other and, and nudity, the highly and mature whatever, content, and, and, yes, and but main language or whatever. Doesn't mention else anything about gambling. They've got a casino in the game. Well, that okay. So that's but that's what I thought that that it's not illegal to to have simulated gambling, but it's certainly addicting. You yes. know, and but uh, here's the thing: when you're yeah. in a game and you're playing with the in-game currency. If you spent $4.99 of your own money to get that yeah. currency, or you've earned it through playing of the game to get that currency, the moment of using yeah. it to for the chance to win whatever is is the same. Of course. So it's a you're absolutely yeah. right. It's a workaround. Yeah. It's a loophole. I mean, they, it is. They, it's a loophole. <laughs> yeah. They, they. I mean, that's why they do it. Um, yeah. They and and yes, it it pours in perhaps more many like much more money than casinos could ever dream of making. Yeah. And I don't think that games can't have this, sure, create whatever, but the rating system, the warning system, the yeah. parent education, that needs to be there. So A, both the players yeah. know what they're playing and what's potentially addicting. The parents know what their yeah. child is playing, what's potentially addicting. Right. It needs to be transparent in that regard. But a mature adult who knows what they're playing, play whatever you want. But they need to be informed of it up front. Well, well, it's very sneaky how they get people on by making it free to play. Because if you're a kid, like if if you want to get, um, you know, a sixty dollars Switch game, you have to ask your parents for the money unless you make that much. If yeah. but if you're if you're seeing a free to play game online, you don't. Most kids are not going to ask their permission to download it and play it because they're like, look, it's free. You know, I don't have to ask my parents. And then um, once they're in the game world and they get all wrapped up in the competition and, you know, trying to master all the aspects of the game, that's when they hit them with these beginner's wish and, you know, with all these little promos uh, that, that cost money. And maybe they're, they're only yep. a few dollars at first. And yep. so <laughs> what is it that the drug dealers say? Your first hit's free, you know? And, and so yeah. that... Yeah. And so you just, and then, and that's when the kids go to their parents and, but they don't have to say, can I borrow $60? They can say, can I borrow or yeah, borrow. It's more like have, can I have $2, you know, to, to buy this loot box and parents might be like, okay, well, it's just $2. It's not $60, you know? Uh, so yeah, I think it, it's a great way to disguise what people are really getting into. Right.
And just like this one showed, there's some moment of the reveals coming, the reveals coming. Yeah. Like this one just did, the things are falling down from the sky and you're waiting for them to land. Yeah. And now it's revealing what she got. There's a lot um, of teasing. Yeah. 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 It's a kind of a tease. It gets it up like, what's it going to be? What's it going to yep. be? Yep. And what's funny about this one is not here, but later on, I might skip ahead to it. So in this first wish, she gets lots of good stuff, right? We've got three, not one four-star character. She's got three four-star characters and a bunch of weapons and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Later on, maybe I can skip ahead to it if I can find it. I don't know. But later on, when I'd she like starts opening that. them, she doesn't get all that much good stuff. And she's like, maybe they give me good stuff the first time for free. Maybe that was on purpose. See, now that that's a very interesting theory because, I mean, you could do make the, I, the AI do anything you want. You know, yep. um, uh, you know, you could have it rigged. And uh, so that you get a lot up front and then you get less stuff later on. Uh, and I don't think that would be illegal. I don't think anyone would hold them accountable. I would argue that you don't need to rig it because that could happen by chance. And, um, you know, again, it's the variable ratio re reinforcement. It's the complete unpredictability uh, yeah. that has been shown historically to get people hooked. I mean, yeah. casinos don't need to rig their slot machines to have people just pulling them day and night. So in that video I referenced before, um, it's called uh, Let's Go Whaling, How to Monetize Free-to-Play Games, right? Yeah. And he talks about that concept you were just talking about. Whaling. We're going like to give that. them something up front that's free mm -hmm. or a great deal. They'd be stupid not to take it. And this yeah. is what he calls breaking that ice. To get yeah. them to think, oh, okay, it would be worth it to spend a dollar ninety nine in this case, yep. four ninety nine. So it breaks that barrier of I'm not going to spend mm -hmm. money because we gave you something so good, you want to do it again. And yeah. then on this one, so they gave her some good stuff for free in the first one, and now in the second one, this poster says probability increased! Exclamation point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's like it's like a patient will tell me, oh, you know, I'm into this free to play game, and I'll be like, really, how how much money did you spend on it in the last month? And they'll be like, well, just two hundred dollars. You know, and I'm like, really, what did you get for two hundred dollars? Like, oh, I got this really cool spaceship. I'm like, okay, so so you know, you got a spaceship for two hundred dollars, where you can get like an entire game in the old days for like. $20 or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. it's, yep. it's just, it's amazing that the, just the, the amount of profit you can pull in on this. Yep. Here's another mechanic I can point out here. It says five-star promotional characters can only be obtained in the specified wish during the specified time periods. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it says time remaining, 12 days, 23 hours, 12 minutes, these little countdown timers. Yeah. Everybody's seen these, right? Yeah. yeah. We see these everywhere. Of course. convinces you you've got a limited time period to get this deal then it'll disappear and we'll never give it to right. you again of course they give it to you again they give you deals all, all right. the time they're they're fake deals but oh yeah the it's like countdown timer convinces you to impulse buy right it's like these everything must go sales and and stores that last for like three years <laughs> uh, going, right. going out of business sales yeah of course. Yeah. A lot of this is just used car salesman techniques, but yeah, it's like but, basic marketing 101. Yeah. But you know how you were talking about how they show you like the shadows of what you're going to get. And then you see the actual thing. Yeah. Like, um, like here it's flying in. Right. Like, here's the shadow. There it is. Well, another thing that research shows is that not only does immediate gratification produce a lot of dopamine, but uh anticipation produces a lot of dopamine mm -hmm. you know so you want to get people always anticipating wow. always going it's not just getting the prize it's the going after it too that creates this great excitement yeah you know it's just this you're you know it's just this game is is not only immediately stimulating but it's continuously stimulating yep it never she, lets you stop anticipating yeah and and Sarah here has some good instinct. She's like, watch me get all weapons. Yeah. She got a character. I've already got Barbara. Yeah. This is not coincidence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Right? laughs> 
No, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Um, in that same podcast episode with the guy in recovery from gaming, he yeah. explains loot box boxes better than I've ever heard anybody explain them. He's like the people. The reason people buy them is because there'll be the chance to win some really good item. He's like think yeah. value of a house, mm -hmm. but what you end up getting is water bottles and tissue boxes, <laughs> right? He's like, you get all this stuff in the game that has no yeah. real value to you, but you're going right. to keep buying it because that one thing you really want has such a high value to you if you didn't right. get it. Well, and then I've also heard about these systems mm -hmm. where you, where gamers will sell things they've gotten out of loot boxes, rare items to other gamers, and it becomes a mm -hmm. whole trade, you know, like it becomes- Actually, yeah, there's a whole thing called third party gambling and skins gambling. Right. right. So they're going to connect this this outside site mm -hmm. to their Steam account or, or the game or how, however, yeah. and they're going to take the skins that they have or their value and then gamble with them on this external site to hopefully right. get better valued. And get to get some of the money back that they've lost on the game you know right so that they can pay for more loot boxes right yeah. right it's just an endless cycle and they get so enmeshed into this world of yeah i yeah. have a lot of patients who uh do you know they're like young entrepreneurs who get into these sites where you grab these deals on these really hard to get sneakers and then you you sell the sneakers to other people are you, are you familiar with that? Um, well, yeah, I mean, somebody like, like even, even my patients make money so that they can have more video game money that way. And mm -hmm. someone, someone behind the scenes is getting super rich off of this, maybe lots of people, mm -hmm. but it's a whole industry of like finding deals online and reselling them, you know, so you, you buy them at a, at a, at a it's almost like stock trading, but Again, they make it legal for kids. You know, they make it legal for people who are under 18. I mean, I don't think you can invest in stocks if you're like 16, but I know you can do all this sneaker trading. You stuff. shouldn't be allowed to, although I yeah. had this one YouTube video where this guy is like, here's your investment portfolio yeah. for your children. And it's, right. you know, it's Roblox and it's uh, Bitcoin yeah. and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, man, I wish I'd invested in Minecraft <laughs> when it good. came out. So here again, she gets all weapons, no characters. And what happened is she got a bunch of good characters, first wish, first spin, yeah, um, which gave her more characters to play. And now she wants a specific character and she's hoping to get that out of these yeah. wishes. Now, one thing about this game in particular, so every game has its own virtual currency. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what can make games addicting is because mm -hmm. I know how much I'm buying for a dollar ninety nine because I live my life in dollars. I don't know how much I'm buying for, you know, five hundred V bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't live my life in V bucks, right? Or whatever the currency of the game is. So by separating their store yeah. from real world dollars, it'll it allows us to lose track of how much we're spending and it's easier to spend more than we planned because it's not yeah. it's not in dollars and in right. this game in particular what makes it a higher risk of addiction to me there is it doesn't have one currency as three. Oh, right there's three different currencies in this game and they have to be sure. used for three different things uh Interestingly, Breath of the Wild also has a lot of different currencies in the game. Um, so who knows? Maybe that's just uh, another thing they stole. But one thing this game, going mm -hmm. back to that, one thing that I haven't seen yet in this game, and maybe it's there, I just haven't seen it, is puzzle solving. Like, so I've seen her fight things. I've seen her, you know, cook get characters. Things. I've seen her cook things. I've seen her explore places. But I haven't seen her actually have to, like, use her brain to solve a puzzle, which is what got me really into gaming um, and what why I love games like Breath of the Wild, because they're filled with puzzles. Um, mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm not at all saying that that game is not addictive. Um, it, it is very addictive. Um, but, it, but it, you know, I, look, I, I don't think that and, and with this game included, I don't think that everything about video games are bad. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I just think 
the problem is it's hard to stop them when it's time to stop. Um, and yeah, I know, think the other kind of problem not is to get on them. Our, our society in general hasn't quite caught up with responsible gaming behaviors mm -hmm. being taught just culturally mm -hmm. as it has with messaging like responsible drinking or safe sex. These mm -hmm. things were taught in school, shared among family and friends. Parents have conversations with their kids about this, but responsible gaming behaviors, what yeah. can make something potentially addicting, why you should right. set your own limits, how you keep yourself to those That's limits, right. you know, not giving into clickbait or peer sure. pressure and these kinds of things. They're not talked about. Yeah. And look, I think that's a good point. And, and the truth is that um, there is strategy in this game. There's a lot of things you do have to use your brain for. And it is almost like solving a puzzle when you have different weapons to choose from and different powers mm -hmm. to choose from to fight enemies. Yeah. Um, and, and so I actually think that um, gaming is, is almost something that, um, that, that can help you from the game, from, from the activities in the game, but it can also help you learn how to regulate yourself. It can help you learn how to not, how to delay your gratification or how to use your breaks to get off when it's time. Um, if you game that way, and if you set out to game that way. So if you set out to, to have balanced gaming and you take it, you know, and you really take it for what it is as, um, you know, just like if you were setting out to go to a bar and you set out to just have one drink and then stop, um, that might actually uh, be an exercise in self-control. That might actually be a valuable skill to learn to stop when it's time um, that might carry over into other aspects of life. So you could make the case that as addictive as this game is, if you can, you know, rather... I mean, sure, we can we can uh, bash the game makers all day, you know, and they'll laugh all the way to the bank. But as addictive as this game is, if you can stop after an hour and then take a break and do, you know, completely offline stuff for an hour, like you've just practiced a skill that you would not have gotten to practice had you not played the game. And right? in a safe environment. So right. That's relatively right. safe meaning you're not in physical danger of anything right 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 so it's i think it's it's not about you know preventing all dopamine release it's about having a dopamine balance you right know? it's about learning to ha to enjoy yourself and and to have pleasure but then stop when it's time to stop and not just need it continuously yeah. And I don't want to, in any way, we're not, I'm not anti-gaming at all. I've got so yeah. many gamers in my family. I don't know that I have any games on my phone right now, but I, if I travel, I do, yeah. <laughs> right? I download some cause you're in airports and lines yeah. and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but like you said, it's important to know what that balance is. Yeah. And also for, particularly for the generation that may be, more new to these games to understand there are age ratings there are warning labels you can do a review of the game first yeah. before yeah. you decide if it's appropriate for yourself or your child without having to buy it right away you know right. there's all all kinds of things there's um we apps say and monitoring right things away, you can install yeah. mm -hmm. say what we should say download it right away because like again <laughs> you don't have to buy these games yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really All well right. that's almost like she's a manga character herself she's like stuck in that emotion <laughs> all right well thank you for reviewing this with me that was a yeah. lot of fun yeah um i hope that it is informative for viewers whether it's for yourself or a loved one or a child to kind of uh i think we covered a lot of stuff that's like general, keep an eye out for these sort of things, right? Keep an eye yeah. out for, I'm asked to spend money without knowing exactly what I'm going to get from it later on. Or um, some of these quick impulses, click here, you've only got a certain period of time. These are things we're going to see in all kinds of games. So once people can start to recognize them, uh, yeah. I think they can be better equipped to say, oh, that's just a marketing strategy. I don't have 
to click on it just because it's there. I can, like you said, delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. I don't need to play a whole nother round just for that. I'm at my time limit to sign off. I'll do it another day. Right. Well, I think it's also another really good take home message is that this is like a wake up call for people who find themselves not being able to get off a game like this, that, hello, that's how it's designed. Like, that's what the game is made to do. And so it's it's not completely your fault that you can't get off a game that has all this code. Don't beat yourself up. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I mean, it's completely designed to take your money from you and your time and to get you um, to not stop. And so if you're not stopping, um, that makes sense. And it might take a lot more um, work to regulate yourself with an activity like that than, you know, with an activity like chess you right. know, or violin. Right. And if you have, if you find you have trouble uh, signing off or stopping the game when you, when you want to, maybe that means this isn't your game. Yeah. Does it mean you can't play any games? Not necessarily, but pay attention to what seems to be the most addicting for you and switch to the games that are more intellectually stimulating and fun without that addictive pull for you. And, and if you find yourself on a game like this all the time, uh, you know, whether you're actually addicted or not, I highly recommend trying to take um, a week detox from all screens, um, at least all unnecessary screens. Um, you know, if you need to text or call people, I guess yeah, you need to. Um, or if you're doing homework on a computer, maybe you plan a lot of structure that week. Maybe you plan a vacation somewhere or a camping trip and just see what it does to your brain when you have three or four days away from a game like this and see how liberated it makes you feel. And um, it's like you're free from the grasp it has over you. Uh, and a lot of my patients, um, once they experience it, they they find it, um, it changes them and, and it changes their perspective and it makes them realize just how much of a hold that game had on them. And, you know, just there there's, there's so much, there's so many functions in their life that get restored when they take a break from it. I like that. I like that. Thank you. And it just, like you said, it can just be a three or four day break, but pay attention, yeah. mindful yeah. of what's going on during that break for you. And if you can't take a, a three or four day break, then that tells you something. And it's actually harder for my patients to, you know, game for an hour and then stop than it is to just stop for a whole day. Uh, so taking a break is actually easier to do um, than the than the other choice. Um, but I I don't even challenge somebody to try doing um, you know the the hour then stop uh, if they're if they're really hooked. I mean I I think that they're almost guaranteed to fail. I think that that that's when it's time to take a break. Excellent, good advice. Thank you. All right. That's it. <laughs>